we're in a small village and uh, we're out in the middle of Somerset here, right on, on the edge of Exmoor. Uh, people know our beers nationwide. <sighs> really good. It tastes like it should. This is your classic Exmoor pub. We still craft our beers, but we make real ales in a traditional way. Exmoor Ales has always been in Wiverliscombe. We're on the edge of the Exmoor National Park and when we grew out of the old brewery it was essential to us that we stayed within the town because that's where our heritage is. Here you can see up the hill by the chimney uh, that's where Exmoor Ales started in 19, 1980. We brewed there up until 2015. The business was founded in 1979. It brewed its first beer in 1980. Uh, the premises which we're at here is a part of the old Hancock Brewery buildings which have been in Wiverliscombe since 1807. The brewery stayed here until 2015 when we moved down the hill. This is where it all went on for 35 years um, and brewed some very fine beer. The building is fairly dilapidated now and hopefully uh, the building will soon be sold and redeveloped. We're a little bit different because we're, we are so traditional. Um, I think a lot of breweries have gone down the road of um, almost trying to chase the market a little bit. And um, you know, the, I keep calling it the new craft beer movement. People always come back to the traditional ales. From a British brewer's point of view, well, a craft ale is very difficult at the moment to try and summarise. Um, I think when people think about craft ale now, what they're thinking about is some of those newer styles uh, which some of the new sort of smaller breweries are producing. Some would say maybe more extreme styles, very hot forward, um, sort of exciting different styles like sour beers and things like that, milkshake IPAs, stuff like that. Some of those beers are wonderful um, and it's great that they're in the market um, to give us a much more of a spectrum of different products. Uh, but when I think about what we do, um, we're a much more traditional brewer. Um, we still craft our beers but we make real ales in a traditional way because the product is still alive. It's more of an art form because it's still got yeast that's working when we, when we seal the product up. It relies on us having great relationship with our customers because the landlord needs to know what they're doing to be able to serve the product properly. We primarily use leaf hops. Ideally, you want them to be as, as fresh as possible. We're very traditional and the reason we do that is because we think it gives a much more um, authentic traditional product but at the same time uh, we think that uh, it gives us a sort of a nice filter when we're draining the, uh, the copper. We use hops from all around the world. Uh, primarily most of the hops that we use are British hops uh, but the, there are some varieties which you have to get from overseas. We find with our beers, uh, we tend to use, we, we do very few beers which use a single variety of hop. Uh, all of our beers on the whole use a number of different hops. Um, so we would have a, so we spread the load across a number of different varieties really. Uh, a lot of breweries might use a single variety of hop in a single beer. Uh, so from our point of view, in developing a beer, um, we're almost lowering our risk a little bit in terms of if we, would, if we were to use a single variety we wouldn't be sure whether that would give us exactly what we want but by using a number of different varieties we're able to it's almost like sort of balancing balancing the different types you can you can sort of raise and lower certain things to get the different qualities that you want. in my opinion in the brewery the most important part of the business is cask washing it's it's a very mind-knowing and te tedious job for uh, for anybody to do it's not an easy thing it's there you're washing but it's the most important thing to do in the brewery mainly because if you can't if you can't wash the casks then uh, you can't rack the casks so we can't fill them um, and if we can't fill them that means uh, the brew team can't brew and then obviously that means that that leaves you without a brewery the explosion of what we term craft beer now I suppose um, people have become a little bit more accustomed to heavy use of hops. Um, I think if you'd have gone back 
10, even maybe 15 years, um, and he'd have thrown some of those big American hops into a traditional English ale, I think it probably wouldn't have been as popular as it would be now. Um, I think that the because of the, the, the advent of the craft beer movement, uh, the modern craft beer movement, I think that people have become almost a little bit less, um, they've become a bit more adventurous in being able to try different varieties and different styles of beer. I think it's happened mostly with the younger age group, age group but I think the, uh, almost the, the, the older generations as well, I think there's almost been a shift with, with that too. Um, probably not as pronounced as with the younger generations. Um, but I think it's inevitable that as these products are out there um, and people, more people are trying them, then obviously beer drinking is, is I don't think, is, is limited to any particular generation. I think you know, there are people of all ages, obviously over 18s, but people of all ages that like to drink beer. Um, so it's inevitable that some of the older generations are going to try some of the craft beers. And, and again, that, that same thing happens where they, they may not sort of latch onto it straight away, but that will influence things and they, uh, they might sort of think, well actually, you know, I quite like that. Yeast has a much bigger impact on beer than a lot of people realise. Um, not only the variety of yeast, but also the temperature at which you ferment. So for instance, something like a Belgian style beer would be fermented very warm. Um, what that does is that throws out a lot of um, what some people would term off flavours, but is actually desirable in some styles. Um, so sort of banana-y flavours and fruity clovey type flavours. Um, so a lot of Belgian beers will brew warmer deliberately to get those flavours. Whereas um, a lot of sort of German brewers would be brewing lagers and very clean styles. So therefore they have to ferment their yeasts very cold. So, so as not to get any of those, those sort of warmer uh, fermentation flavours. So there's such a wide, that's just, that's just the yeast as a, um, as a sort of a variable. Um, and then of course once you throw in the different types of malt, different types of hop, and even different types of water profile. Um, so and say an Irish water profile would be ideally suited to making stout, which is why Guinness has got the way it, ha it got to, as big as it has. Um, and also some London areas, which is why Porter started in London, because it's a very good style for their type of water. We've got a very, very neutral water here. We're currently parked on a bridge on top of uh, Windwall Lake. It's a Southwest Lakes Trust in um, yeah, just outside of Brompton Regis. So this is where the water comes from for the brewery. We're lucky, it's actually almost a blank canvas for us. So we can add any, if we need to add anything into the water to get it to how we want it, we can. It's much easier to be able to add things to the water than to be able to take away. Some breweries have to filter the water uh, to take away any undesirable things. So if they're trying to make something that's got a very clean style, like a lager or something, they might actually have to filter their water to remove um, any, um, any minerals which are undesirable in a lager. Um, but we're quite lucky we've got very neutral water. So, so we're here at the uh, Karoo Arms in uh, Crocombe and we've decided to come down here today to do a little demo brewing demonstration. Um, small brew, about 20 litres. We're just going to make some Exmoor Ale. Uh, it's one of the most popular beers in this pub. Uh, so we thought it would be a nice idea to come and show some of the customers how we actually put it together. We've got a little pilot kit that we use to develop recipes on. I've brought that down here today and uh, we're going to let people taste and smell and feel the ingredients and get to know a bit more about how a beer comes together. We've got a few of our basic ingredients that we use at the brewery here. We've got three different types of, uh, of barley malt here. Uh, we've got pale malt, chocolate malt and crystal. Um, those are three of about half a dozen different malts that we use in the brewery, but these are the most popular ones that we use. And we've also got a, a few hops here so people can have a, have a smell and a touch and, and sort of see really, you know, people have heard of hops, but I don't think a lot of people would actually know what a hop looks or smells like, so it's quite nice for people to feel the ingredients. As head brewer, uh, it's also, I think it's quite nice for people to sort of see the human side of making the beer, to be able to, um, to, to, to explain to people, you know, if there's a particular aspect of a beer that they like or they don't like, why, what we've done in the process to be able to get, to get that quality. And, uh, and I think people, especially on a local level, um, in Somerset, um, I think people really sort of uh, they enjoy being able to make the human connection and, and being able to meet people like myself and some of the other staff at the brewery and, and really get involved in the local community like this. 
really good. It tastes like it should. We have a number of bottle beers in our range of four at the moment. They're all different styles, really. I suppose we try to uh, we try to cover all the different types of beer we do, but obviously we can't bottle all of our beers, so we have to pick out a few of them. Um, and these are our, these are what we think would be our most popular bottle beers. So I've put them into strength order here. So at the lowest ABV or alcohol by volume um, is this one XPA. Um, it's four and a half percent pale ale. Uh, so it's, uh, it's actually got a lot of hoppy character to it. Um, it's a lovely, summery, refreshing beer. Uh, probably not quite as extreme as a lot of the, the, the big sort of craft beer pale ales out there, but for the traditional market that generally buy beers, this is absolutely ideal. That's as hoppy as we go. Uh, the next, next in the range is our gold, uh, and this is the original golden ale. Uh, we were the very first to produce a golden ale all the way back in 1986. Uh, and this is still our most popular beer. Golden Ale uses 100% pale malt. Um, there's no coloured malts in there at all. Uh, it's a very simple beer, um, but again, very popular. Some of the best beers, I think, are some of the, uh, the simplest beers. Uh, next one along in the range is Exmoor Stag. Now, Exmoor Stag is one that we've only recently started to bottle. Uh, it's a very strong bitter. Um, this one is currently 5.2%, which puts it sort of in the premium, sort of strong bitter category. Uh, and this is what you'd expect from a traditional strong British bitter. So it's got some really nice toffee caramel. It's quite sort of dark brown in colour. Um, it's very malt forward. Um, the hops um, are, are relatively well pronounced, but they don't dominate. Um, Exmoor Beast has got a bit of a cult following for us. Whenever we talk to people uh, or we talk about the brewery, people always mention Exmoor Beast. Most, I suppose, traditional ale drinkers in the UK would have had Exmoor Beast. This is a 6.6%, really strong. Um, again, it's a sort of a, it's a dark ale. Uh, it's done in the style of a traditional old English porter. Um, so there's a lot of uh, you don't really get much of the hops coming through because it's so dominated by the, the the pure amount of malt in there. So there's a lot of you get a lot of dark fruit character, sort of Christmas cake character, raisins, um, almost a little bit of coffee in there as well. But I think people like it because even though it's so strong, it's very smooth um, and it's. I know it's, it sounds strange, but it's almost quite an easy drinking strong beer. People don't realise um, until maybe they get into their second bottle how strong the first bottle was. In those days, you know, industries like brewing were, were determined by, by distribution. So, you know, a Dre could do, I don't know, 25 or 30 miles. Yeah. So they could hit the coast, Porlock and places like that yeah. in a day and, and get, get back again. Yeah. And then, then there would be another brewery outside that circle. So it's completely different with... Um, with modern transport, and that's why there could be such easy consolidation. Boy, like with you, Paul. Boy, like Winsford. Boy, like with you, Paul. White horse. There's, uh, there's an old frang. Can you just give us a shout if there's any more for the white horse? Today we're off delivering all around Exford. What a busy run today, me and Arthur have got our work out. This is the, we'll be going right up through the heart of it all. So um, it's a nice run, I do enjoy doing this run. The roads aren't great, but the, uh, the views are nice. It's a nice, it's a nice way to start your week work. So this is uh, the reason why we're called Exmoor. Um, we're here at the Crown Hotel in Exford right in the centre of Exmoor. Uh, today they are having quite a few cats. So I'm just getting my paperwork ready for the next delivery. I love this job purely because it's got a fantastic bunch of lads working at the brewery. You know you end up you end up going out and seeing the world as well. Um, even being a local boy when I was younger, I would, I would never have known something like this out here existed until I, uh, until I started delivering beer. We are off to the Royal Oak at Wins Ford. Yeah, this, this one's a real chocolate box type tub. This is your classic Exmoor pub. You don't, you don't get much more West Country than a beautiful thatched roof and some really fashioned old signs. Country else for country people with country food. You can't get any more country than that. These are the sort of roads that you 
roads that uh, living where we live and working where we work, we tend to uh, tend to see much more of the main roads. Nice and tight, nice and laney, nice and country. And that was it, that was our final delivery of the day at the George Inn in Brompton Regis. In 2007, we celebrated 200 years of brewing in, in, in Wiverliscombe. By far the biggest employer was, uh, was Hancock's Brewery, the, the, uh, the major brewery. We're just coming into the new building that the brewery's bought. It's a little bit of a, a building site at the moment, but it's going to give us a lot of opportunity to expand our output. We were a little bit tight on space, particularly for beer storage, and the factory next door came up uh, for sale, so it was an opportunity we couldn't miss. Uh, and here you see the beginnings of our work on it. And what it means really is for the future of the business, uh, we have the opportunity to probably treble, maybe even more our output capacity if there's demand to do so.